Head over keels. Actual naval stories. Lucky mess. In autumn 1943, the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, was on board the brand new battleship Iowa, heading to the Tehran Conference. Fleet Admiral and Commander-in-Chief Ernest Joseph King, who was accompanying the President to the conference, being aware of Mr. Roosevelt's affection for the Navy, gave an order to the escorting ships to conduct drill training. Balloons were launched from the deck of Iowa, playing the role of enemy aircraft. The AA gunners readily shot down the targets, demonstrating their superb competence and accuracy. The second part of the training was a torpedo attack. The largest and most sluggish ship in the squadron, Iowa, was chosen as the target. The destroyer William D. Porter came into firing position. Orders were given from the bridge. The first torpedo tube, fire! The torpedo men also displayed their fine skills, just as if they were in a real battle, except the torpedo stayed in its tube. The second torpedo tube, fire! Suddenly there came a hissing sound, and a torpedo splashed into the water next to the destroyer. Havoc erupted on the bridge. In just a few minutes, the torpedo would hit Iowa with the president on board. The destroyer's crew, using a searchlight, began to warn the battleship about the danger, but no one on the second ship could understand their unclear messages. Meanwhile, one of the signalmen on Iowa shouted, Torpedo to starboard! This is not a drill! Torpedo to starboard! The president was standing on deck, watching what was going on with great interest. The battleship siren roared, and the vessel rapidly began to turn starboard. The anti-aircraft gun started firing very close to the board in order to hit the encroaching torpedo. Luckily, the battleship was maneuverable enough to dodge the torpedo, which detonated around 1,000 feet behind. After William D. Porter returned to the base, its commander prepared himself for the worst. Soon, he was called into the King's office. The commander-in-chief scolded him for negligence and reprimanded him for his failure to hit the target, despite a most favorable tactical situation. They say the president himself asked King not to punish the crew and commander of the unfortunate destroyer. It was all because Franklin D. Roosevelt had great affection for the Navy.